But, of course, we've got to talk about King Charles, who you may have seen, uh, that he gave this historic speech last night during his royal tour in Kenya, where he addressed the, uh, and I, this is a quote, unjustifiable acts of violence that were carried out by Britain's colonial rulers against Kenyans during the 1950s. Well, let's join our, Ross, our, our, I always call you, our Russell <laughs> editor. It's our royal editor, Russell Myers. I will get it right one day. It's all with our royal Russell, live from Kenya this morning, where, of course, the king and queen, uh, Russell, are continuing their state visit today. What did you make of it being there, hearing the king talk in language that we haven't really heard before, in what is, um, you know, a really difficult situation, uh, I suppose, because you've got to look back at history and put your hands up and say we got it very badly wrong. Yeah, you do. Good morning, Ranveer. Uh, you just missed the King and Queen, actually. That yeah. would have been a photo bomb for the ages. Um, but they've just... Uh, I'm at the UN, as you can see, with all the flags. But in terms of the state banquet speech last night, you've just heard the pretty emotive, very punchy language used by uh, King Charles, talking about the abhorrent nature of British colonial rule, no justification for the crimes, indeed talking about the Mau Mau uprising of the 1950s. And I think, you know, when I speak to people at the palace, they say, you know, Charles is very acutely aware that his reign must be to acknowledge the wrongs of the past. You know, we can't rewrite history, but it's about standing up and being counted and, uh, and making sure he's doing the right thing moving forward. And it, it's certainly been very well received here in Kenya. Yeah, and he was described, wasn't he, by the president as being a veteran visionary, which I think is a huge compliment, isn't it, uh, from another world leader to say, we see that you look with different eyes, perhaps, and you speak in a different way now. Um, and also, um, Russell, the fact that the UK has been compensating victims in Kenya, but it, it, it isn't really enough, is it, I don't think, for the Kenyans? No, and I think, you know, you, do, you talk about sort of moving forward, there's definitely been calls for reparations. I mean, it's, uh, talking about billions, if not trillions of dollars around the world. Charles sees his role as very much, not necessarily apologising for the wrongs, but acknowledging those wrongs. And the British government have already paid £20 million to ancestors of... Uh, of those of the local people who are affected by the Mau Mau uprising in the 50s. But this is an issue. You know, we've already had it in, uh, in the Caribbean when uh, uh, William and Kate were there yeah. a couple of years ago. This is the language that is being used and certainly something that they have to tackle. And I think, you know, you have to give Charles credit because he is he's making sure that it's very, very much front and centre on the agenda. And I think that that's pretty much short, stopping short of an apology, which is what some critics will want. He's, he's playing his role quite well in that sense. Yeah, um, and there may be some legal reason for not saying sorry itself, because that feels like a yeah. legally binding thing, and therefore it may uh, precipitate lots and lots of legal claims, I suppose. But um, it's really interesting, the difference, as you say. You know, I remember Prince William looking quite uncomfortable, but you can see experience really pays with the King, doesn't it? Uh, he's been doing this a long time. Um, what's next, then, today for the King and Queen? Well, as you would expect when Charles and Camilla are on these sorts of tours, uh, very much climate change heavy. You know, he's an ambassador. Certainly the president was um, espousing his sort of, uh, environmental credentials yesterday. They're going to go to a donkey sanctuary later, an elephant orphanage. So very much about the environment today. And so often with these tours, it's about celebrating local people. Yes. Now, why are they here? A lot of people may ask. Perhaps uh, the king and queen should have gone to one of the 14 realms, first of all. But... You know, Kenya is a bastion of democracy here in Africa. And, uh, and certainly Charles and Camilla will be wanting to celebrate local, local people throughout this tour. Well, it's lovely to hear. There's a lovely uh, photograph on the front of the Times, actually, of the King with um, lots of students who took part in the Prince's Trust International Enterprise Challenge. And, of course, the Prince's Trust is a huge part of his legacy. And that's actually a really lovely photo on the front of the Times. So thanks so much. Our Royal Russell, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Forget the Myers bit, you're Royal Russell That's from fine. now on. <laughs> Lovely to see you out there. Have a good trip.